Hey guys, welcome back to a new video. In this video, we will set up our article class or better adjust our article class to be ready to be used with our room local database. And we will also set up our data access object with room. What that is, I will explain when we actually create it. First, let's jump into our article class. And to actually be able to save an article in our database, we need to annotate this class with add entity which will just tell Android Studio that this article class is a table in our database. So article will be the whole table and that table has several columns, author, content, description and so on. And each row in that table will represent a single entry in our database. And inside of these parentheses of that entity annotation, we need to specify the, the name of our table by writing table name and I will set it to articles. And what we will also need to add to this article class is a primary key. A primary key is used to give our article class a unique identifier to later on differentiate between different articles. So that is really unique in that table. Each ID will only exist once. So that is how I will call it. I will call it an ID. So let's do that var ID. That will be an integer. And it is a nullable integer because not every article will have an ID due to the fact that we get a lot of articles from retrofit that we don't save into our database. And if the articles are only displayed in our app in the breaking news tab or in the search news tab and we don't save them into our lo local database, then we also don't need an ID for that. So that is why we make that ID nullable, but we would anyways make that nullable also if we only have these articles in our local database. And we also need to annotate that ID with add primary key and set the, the attribute auto generate to true so that we don't need to worry about the incrementation of that ID that will tell Room that it should automatically generate them. And that is everything we need to adjust in our article class. The next step is to create our article DAO. DAO stands for data access object. And that is basically an interface such as our news API interface. Here we define the functions, how we can access our API, how, how we can make our um, API requests. And the data access object is basically the same, but for our local database. So inside of that, we will define the functions that access our local database, that save articles in our database, that read articles, that delete articles, and so on. For that, I want to create a separate package for all that database stuff. So go to your root package, new package. I will call it db. And inside of that database package, I will create a new class. Oops, I will create a new class and which is an interface and I will call it article DAO. And each DAO object, each data access object needs to be annotated with a DAO. So Room actually knows that this is an interface that defines the functions for us. The first function I will put in here is a function to insert or update an article. So we need to annotate that function with add insert and as a parameter, we pass an on conflict strategy. So on conflict strategies determine what happens if that article that we want to insert in that database already exists in our database. And in that case, we simply want to replace that article. So we define an on conflict strategy on conflict strategy dot replace. And all these functions will also be suspend functions. So we will use coroutines for that, of course. So let's write suspend functions. Uh, suspend function and I will call this absurd which stands for update or insert so it will insert a new article and if it is already in the database it will update it instead and replace it and as a parameter we pass the article that we want to insert in our database and this returns along which is the ID that was inserted the next function in this article DAO will be a query because this function should return all available articles in our database. So we have to annotate that function with add query and make sure to select that room query and not that retrofit query, of course. And in those parentheses, we now need to pass an SQL query that should select all articles that this function should return. So we can just pass a normal SQL query here 
And in our case, we just want to select everything from our articles table. And as you can see, Room is smart enough to um, autocomplete that articles table that we declared in our article class here. And the function won't be a, th a suspend function this time, just a normal function because it will return a live data object and that doesn't work with suspend functions. If you don't know what live data is, that is just a very cool um, class of those Android architectural components that enables us or our fragments to subscribe to changes of that live data. And whenever that data in our database changes, then the live data will notify all of its observers, so our fragments, about those changes. So they can update the recycler view in our case. And that is especially in combination with device rotations very useful, because whenever we rotate our device, then the activity is recreated. And by using that live data object in our view model, because the view model is not recreated when we rotate our device, then our recycler view immediately gets the most up-to-date data from the live data object. So we will call this function get all articles and that will return a live data as I said. And inside of this live data, we have a list of articles, of article of course. And that means now that whenever an article inside of that list changes, then this live data will notify all of its observers that subscribed to changes of that live data. So that is really cool. And then as a last function, we also want to have a function to delete an article in our database. That is very easy to do. Just annotate this with add delete. And this will be a suspend function again, which will be called delete article. And we have to pass the article that we want to delete. And this function won't return anything. And that is it for the first part of our database creation. In the next part, we will continue with that and create the actual database and also what is called a type converter. But you will learn what that is in the next part. I decided to split that into two parts because it's quite a lot of new stuff. And I really want to make this series for people who have never worked with Room before. So if this video helped you to get a better understanding of all that database stuff and that data access objects, then please let me know in the comments. That would be really helpful for me. And also, if you have any questions, then don't mind asking them below. Have a good day. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.